Jakarta, the modern city that never sleeps, is dominated by the influence of Generation Z, born from 1995 to 2010, with 2.7 million of them residing here, covering up to 25% of all. Cyberspace is always on their hands, and that's why everything is instant, practical, and easy. However, this leads to something negative, the moral degradation. These are some examples that should be taken into account. We need to remember that Jakarta, at first, is a city with less chaos when talking about their morality. Sadly, the indigenous people, Betawi, have been evicted to the corner, bringing their folktales with them, and it has shown a negative growth of their preservations. So, here we are. I Patricia and I Puspa bring up their folk tale to the floor. Betawinis folk tales are diverse. According to our questionnaires conducted to 100 Jakardans, we have collected 23 folk tales. But in our overall research, we only take Murtado Macan Kemayoran because of its inferiority in Betawi culture and the relevant message from Murtado, the main character. Wait, wait. What is Murtado Macan Kemayoran? Do you know it? If you don't know, then you are the same as most of our respondents here. Now that you don't know, you might be wondering what the story tells us about. Once upon a time, there was a young man named Murtado. He was a brave man that defended the truth and the oppressed group. He didn't afraid of what danger may come because of his good deed. Oftentimes, he oppressed the oppressive groups till they surrendered. After that, he was trusted by them to kick all the bandits off the district. In the end, he was offered to raise his degree within the group. However, he refused it as he wanted to be down to earth. Now that you've heard the story, it's time for us to explain our problem statements. In this research, we indicate, first, how far does Gen Z know about Murtado Macan Kemayoran, and the second one, how does Gen Z interpret the folktale into their daily life and find the relevance within their daily lives, and the last one, how to introduce the story to fellow Jakartan Gen Z in this modern era in the most effective way. As a problem statement being stated, where yes, our purposes for conducting this research includes first, analyzing Jakarta Gen Z's knowledge about the folktale, second, identifying Gen Z's needs to preserve the folktale as a part of Indonesia's diverse culture, and then lastly, acknowledging the most effective ways to introduce the aforementioned folktale. To do this research, we surpassed two phases of methods. First, data collection method, which includes literature reviews and field studies by conducting questionnaires for a total 100 Jakarta Generation Z, then choose seven of them to join our interview and focus group discussion. Second, data processing method, which includes the triangulation data of field studies result. Then we went for interactive analysis method, which by the flow includes reducing data, serving data, and verification or conclusion. Specifically on serving the data, we mix the method with statistical descriptive method. Let's talk about Murtado Macan Kemayoran's popularity among our respondents. According to the questionnaires, there are only 26 people who know these stories. This is far lower than Sipitung with 77 people. A simple reason behind this is the authenticity of both stories. Sipitung has more reliable sources and somehow gets more attention in the art world compared to Murtado Macan Kemayoran. Bang Yahya, a Jakarta humanist from Lembaga Kebudayaan Betawi, has stated his doubt about Murtado's existence and therefore, he explained that Murtado might be a story that is constructed by the idealism of the Taiwanese during colonialism era. Since the story is not as popular as Ipitung, there are so many versions coming up when you search from the internet. However, that's okay, since the most important thing is Murtado that teaches us about defending the oppressed groups and being brave to counter the oppressive groups. Because of this, the majority of respondents, which is 67 people, regardless of their beforehand knowledge, answered that they are interested in the story. Now, continuing with their perceptions about Murtado characteristics. There are three mainstream keywords that we found, which are good by 57 people, brave and helpful by 34 people, and defending the truth by 16 people. How about the moral of the story? 
Well, 60% of them stated that they need to be braver in the case of defending the truth and justice. After knowing both the character and the moral message, it's time for the well offense. According to our focus group discussions, there are no answers stating their disagreement towards the relevancy between the story and their daily life in Jakarta, with two answers staying neutral while the others saying they agree. The reason behind this is the sensitivity of Gen Z in Jakarta progressively increased to the inferiors. Hence, individualism still increases and Gen Z is labeled to stay loud in the media, but not with their real action, said two other seven respondents. Notifying this problem, there should be solutions. According to the interviewed humanist Bang Yahya, promotion on online platforms and regularly evaluating Jakarta's local content education remains the most effective ways for now. In addition, our respondents in the focus group discussions and interviews stated that making webtoon, web series, interactive games, and competitions related to the folk tale would be effective as well. Parents' involvement to tell the story to their kids even before sleep is believed to be effective as well. Now we jump to the conclusion. It's noticeable that Murtada Macan Kemayoran is not that well known among Gen Z in Jakarta. However, they could have been interested if we show the story since Murtada becomes role model for youth because of his bravery to defend the oppressed groups. Plus, the story itself is relevant enough to our modern daily lives. So, the most effective ways to promote this are promoting on online platforms, regularly evaluating the related educational program, and involving parents to preserve the folk tales. So that's all from our research. We hope that it's useful for our culture's preservations and apologies if there are mistakes. Thank you and goodbye! goodbye.